Submarines are not the only big ships built here in Groton. Stay tuned as we talk with town historian Jim Streeter on this week's edition of Welcome to Groton. Welcome to Groton. I'm your host, Carol Pratt, and it's my pleasure to have on the show town historian Jim Streeter. Jim, thank you so much. You are always a wealth of information. Thanks for having me. I appreciate <laughs> that. So, everyone calls Groton the uh, submarine capital of the world, but we had a lot of other big ships built here. Tell me we about that. We certainly have. What kind? Uh, people do don't realize it, but uh, we've had various shipyards, and just as an example, uh, one was called the Palmer Shipyard in Mystic, and, and they built various wooden boats throughout the years. Uh, and then there was an unusual one called Hickman Sea Sled Company, oh. and uh, they built high-speed power boats. And they were over in Mystic and Groton. Oh. And then we had to cross the Mystic Shipyard, that's the famous shipyard, oh. and they built schooners and ironclad uh, ships. Wow. And then we had Groton Ironworks. And that's another subject for another show. Oh. Uh, but they were also located in uh, Mystic and Noink, and they built large cargo ships. Oh. But today I wanted to talk about one that was called the uh, Eastern Shipbuilding Company, which was located over off of Thames Street. And they built uh, very large, and we'll discuss that, uh -huh. uh, steamships that were cargo and passenger ships. Now, were they located near where EB is now? Yeah, basically where their north yard is located. Uh, okay. That's where they yeah. are. Oh, I'll be done. Yeah. Now they're no longer in, in existence. Obviously. No, they were only in existence for about uh, about five years, and they had the shipyard for about nine years. Oh, now how did they form? Well, there was a gentleman named James uh, Hill, and he was from uh, uh, Northwest, and uh, he built the railroads out Northwest. Well, this gentleman was, uh, in fact, they called him an empire builder, oh. and uh, he was an entrepreneur, and he was always thinking how to make how to make a big buck. <laughs> And uh, one of the ideas he came up with was building large cargo and passenger ships to travel in the Orient. And he felt that uh, uh, he could sup uh, supplant the uh, Oriental uh, diets with wheat. Oh. And he figured he could uh, probably ship 60 million bushels of wheat every year wow. and thus make a, a fortune at that and then bring products back from the Orient. So that was his idea to do that. So he was going to bring all that wheat from the Midwest to our Eastern Shipbuilding Company? That's correct. He was going to oh. ship from Seattle over to, uh, over to various areas in the Orient oh, wow. and then bring their products back to the United States. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. So I have here, there's some boat, but before I, before I get to Minnesota and Dakota, I want to ask, did we ever have like ferry boats or anything like that here? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we had several, we had passenger boats, and we talked about that yeah. in the previous show. But we also had a, a, a ferry system that carried uh, uh, railroad cars from New London to Groton before they had the first ah. railroad bridge. Okay. And uh, they had a large facility in Groton, uh, so the trains would come in from Boston, mm -hmm. et cetera, and, and they'd go there and they'd ship them across to New London and vice versa. They would come, come back uh, to the Groton side. Neat. And that's actually where that uh, facility was located, this Eastern Shipbuilding Company. Oh, be darn. Yeah. Now, they had, are these the two big ships they did? Something called the Minnesota and the Dakota, my notes say. They did. They were large steamships, and uh, they so were... So when you're saying large, are you saying like the size of the Titanic, or are you saying the size of a cruise ship? What? Uh... Well, we'll talk a little bit further on that okay. later, but at the time, these two ships were considered the largest ships in the world. Really? Okay. And they Out were of built, our town? Yeah, built here in, <laughs> in downtown Groton, as we call it. Uh, they were steamships, uh, again, cargo and passenger ships. <clears throat> wow. Okay, the Minnesota and Dakota, which was built first? The Minnesota was built first. Okay. Uh, but we'll, let, let's go back a little bit and talk okay. about how Groton was selected to be the, the shipyard. Oh, okay. Uh, so James Hill, he hired a, a gentleman uh, uh, named uh, Hanscom, who happened to be 
the superintendent of the Bath Iron Works at the time. Oh. And uh, he hired him, and he checked throughout New England uh, to try to find the appropriate shipyard. And they got down to this railroad facility because it had closed when the bridge opened. Mm -hmm. And he looked at that facility and he said, you know, this is a great area. It's deep water. The land where we can build the ships, it's, it's uh, granite underneath so they can support the weight of these ships. Mm -hmm. We have railroad facilities. Mm -hmm. But another important thing that they had was Groton, at that, at that time, had their own electric company, which was important to them. Ah, yeah. So, and how ironic because Bath Iron Works is now part of General Dynamics, that's, are they That's not? correct. Yes, yes. That's so correct. That's something. Yeah. Wow. So, uh, um, Eastern Shipbuilding formed, and they the first things they built were these Minnesota and Dakotas. Is that the first thing? That's they built? the only things that they built. Ah. Uh, oh. Uh, they they wanted to originally. I believe they had four in mind to build, but as we'll discover later yeah. in the talk, uh, they really didn't. They they weren't as fruitful as. Uh, as Mr. Hill thought they would be. Oh. Uh, so they did not build the remaining two of, of these cargo steamships. Okay, now, right. how were they able, first of all, do you know why they, he named them those names, the Minnesota and well, North Dakota? Well, he came from the Northwest. In fact, he lived in Minnesota. Oh, all right. Okay. So I'm sure that's there's a it. connection there between why they were called the Minnesota and Dakota, yeah. because that's the area he was from. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so how did they go about building these things? They must have hired an awful lot of people. Well, interestingly, uh, it's, it was steel plate with rivets. Uh, and they built them on uh, wooden uh, bilge plates and uh, uh, ways, wooden ways. Uh, but the, the actual process required for the two ships about 2,000 people. So the employment was around 2,000 people, which was tremendous for our, our economy at yes. the time. Yes. And what year was this that this was happening? Well, they, they purchased the shipyard around 1901, early 1901, oh. and they immediately started working. Once, once they signed a lease for the railroad property, uh, they built other facilities down there. They converted the, uh, the railroad building, the turnaround building, into uh -huh. a, a blacksmith shop and things like this. Uh, but they built other supporting facilities, uh, and they started construction in late 1901. Oh, yeah, so wow. immediately they went to work with it. You know? Wow! And both of these ships' purpose was for him to get his um, grain, or well, it, it, it was a combination. Uh, one, he, he felt he could make a, a tremendous amount of money shipping wheat yeah. over to the Orient right. to supplement the rice yeah. uh, diet that yeah. the Oriental people would eat, and then bring their their, their products back, i.e., silk, things of that nature, uh, back here. Uh, but also, he was thinking about passengers that wanted to go over there. So there was a, a large capacity on, on those uh, ships for, for passengers. Oh, so not only cargo, but also passengers. That's correct. That's amazing. Yep. Now, tell me, you said that this, you would discuss how big this is. Um, what do you think it cost in those days to put those uh, ships in the ways? Well, actually, they... The actual total cost for both ships was $7.9 million. Wow. Now, if you converted that to today's uh, figures yeah. or, or cost, yeah. it would be around $513 million. That's oh, what my it cost God. for these two ships. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, but the economy must have had a real boost at that time. They did. Uh, the area of New London and Groton, uh, the housing. Yes. You know, for the, for the uh, shipbuilders and their families, uh, the local stores. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's interesting because when you follow up after they closed down, and it's kind, of, it's kind of a mirror image of what happened after electric boat downsized considerably a few years ago. Uh -huh. uh, well, all the houses were, 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 were filled. Yeah. Uh, the, the rental properties were all filled. Yeah. Uh, but when they moved out, the, the people that had the rental properties they're saying, well, I'm not making any money anymore. Right, right. Uh, it's similar to the parking lots that we had. Everybody here, when electric boat was yes, way up, yes. built the parking lots. They made an extra, a few extra dollars yes, doing that. Yes. And they went electric boat downsized. The, they sat there with but a now, vacant. But now they're coming back. Yes, they are, unfortunately. <laughs> so maybe Eastern Shipbuilding should have hung on a little longer, maybe, <laughs> well, or something. I don't know. That would have been nice. Yeah, why did, they, why did they go belly up? Well, uh, again, the two ships that they... Uh, uh, 
uh, that they built uh, did not uh, make the money that, that they were supposed to. And, and there's a few other stories that go in there. They, they had some problems with one of them. Uh, oh. If we talk about the launching and things like this, it's a very interesting stories that oh, relate yeah. to that. Oh, wow. Um, they were unique in that they carried cargo and passengers, or how else were they unique? Well, of course, the size. Yeah. Uh, the size are specifically uh, unique, uh, but their cons the, the construction, the internal construction of what the facilities that they had on, on, on board. Uh, it, it, you just can't imagine. Well, you're servicing passengers, but you also have to have the space for, for a large crew. amount of, of cargo. And crew, too, right? And crew, yeah. Now, did they have separate uh, facilities for the passengers? Uh, did they make it like a little no, cruise were, ship on this end? And no, you, you got to understand, this, this boat is actually uh, nine stories high, nine floors. There's nine decks, as they call them in, in the nine boat. Nine decks. Nine decks. I'm uh, trying to picture a cruise ship. Um, how many decks there are, so it's... I've been on a few cruise ships, and it, it's compatible. Usually wow. there's about like 11 to 13 decks on a cruise Now, I wouldn't ship. think, I know that the uh, Thames River has a very deep, which is a wonderful thing for us, has a deep, is very deep in the middle of the Thames River. It, it is. So, so they had no problem at all launching on our Thames River because of that? No, in fact, that was one of the, uh, one of the, one of the drivers for them to, to select Groton as they were, was the deep water that we had here wow. uh, that could handle the draft of the boat, the, the yeah. heaviness of the boat. And has it always been that, or did we actually make it deeper? Do you know that? We have made it deeper. Yeah. Uh, okay. We have. Over the years, they have dredged it several times to yeah. accommodate uh, uh -huh. uh, specifically submarines that, yeah. that go up the uh, sure, river. because they so. keep getting bigger and bigger, too. They do. Uh, we got to take a short break, but when we come back, we will learn some more about some of the great ships from Groton. Please stay tuned. It's the most natural thing for me to dance, but I was tripping and I was falling and didn't even know what multiple sclerosis was. When I perform, I really love connecting with people. It's definitely cool to be able to give someone an experience through virtual reality. Oh my God. I dream sometimes and I see that. We've all seen stories of conflict that ended with peace. We've seen stories of hunger end in abundance. We see stories of fear, despair, and poverty, but they can end with courage, hope, and love with you. Be a part of writing a story that's greater than poverty. Learn how at worldvision.org. Chris Domine is a husband, father, an athlete, even an Iron Man. But 10 years ago, Chris's kidneys were failing. The doctor said, if you don't do dialysis, if you don't get a kidney transplant, you are going to die. Then Chris received a second chance, made possible by an organ donor. Your well-being changes from loss of hope to better times ahead. Imagine what you could make possible. Learn more and sign up as an organ, eye, and tissue donor. Go to organdonor.gov. Welcome back. We're talking with town historian Jim Streeter about some of the big ships built right here in Groton. Okay, uh, Jim, I can picture this must have been a very big deal when these ships were launched here. Um, first of all, just the size of them alone, but which was launched first, the Minnesota? The Minnesota was launched okay. first, and that was in uh, uh, 1903, okay. February of 03. And where a lot of people did a lot of people. Well, it was out. almost like an unofficial holiday in, in the region. Oh, wow. Uh, uh, about 40,000 people attended the launch. Oh that, that'll give God. you an idea. All the stores uh, closed at 11 o'clock. The launch was uh, to take place at, at noon. No school that day. Right? Uh, oh. So uh, there were special trains that brought people in. Sure. Uh, special ferry boats were bringing people in. Uh, and of course, they had, uh, they had spaces uh, that were for rent so you could observe the launch itself. In fact, right across the street from the main gate of, of the facility, oh. somebody built a, a, a viewing stand with 1,500 seats and, and was charging people. It may have only been 50 cents, but 50 cents <laughs> back then was a lot of money. Sure and yeah. then they had steamships out uh, with viewing uh, seats on them 
also. Oh my, yeah. what a big deal, huh? Uh, but it was an interesting launch because, uh, again, it was supposed to go down at, uh, at 12 o'clock. It was supposed to be launched at, at 12 o'clock at noon. Mm -hmm. uh, and like submarine launches, you have to, there's a tide that you have to worry about, the water tide. Mm -hmm. So you only have a certain uh, window to, to launch these. Well, they had problems with the wild, uh, wooden blocks underneath, raising the ship up to, to permit it to slide. Oh dear. And uh, again, it was cold and windy and cloudy. And uh, so the spectators, they were getting cold. <laughs> right? And it actually went down by the time they, they raised it up at 2.15 in the afternoon. Oh no, okay, they so, waited all that time. Yeah, so it was an interesting launch, but it was a very spectacular event for the area. Wow. Mm -hmm. And where did it head to after that? Well, of course, after they launched them, they, they bring it back in, and they, it took another 16 months to complete it. Ah. Uh, and then after, after this boat, as well as the, the second boat were completed, uh, they were home based in Seattle, Washington. Okay. Did the Minnesota ever come back here? No, it did not. It did oh. not. No, oh. it, uh, again, home based in, in uh, uh, Seattle, yeah. and it traveled uh, the Orient from Seattle. That was the wow. home base. Now, what about the Dakota? When was that launched? Uh, that was launched in 1904. All right. Oh. All right. So, so shortly there. thereafter, uh, it was launched. And uh, did they have room enough to work on both? Absolutely. They were. They the were. They were uh, on sister sister ways. They uh -huh. were built simultaneously, side by side. Yeah. And of course, the, the Minnesota was built first, right, and then right. uh, second. Uh, the, uh, the Dakota was. Wow. Now, how was that launch? Was that a little was, smoother? <laughs> that was a little smoother. And uh, uh, an interesting thing, and we'll talk about this. Uh, when the ship went, it started to go so quick that the young lady that christened the ship with a bottle of champagne or wine at the time, right. uh, she struck the bow. And when she struck the bow, on the front of the bow, there are numbers that give you water lines. Uh -huh. And she struck the number 13, Ooh. which uh, is not a good thing. It's not a good thing, and we'll talk about that <laughs> when, when we talk about the, the what happened to those boats subsequently. Oh wow! Yeah. Now, did as many people come? To no, the there was only about uh, uh, there was only about 10, 15,000 at the second launch. Oh. But an interesting point: uh, the cost of the launch uh -huh. was back then. Fifty thousand dollars. Whoa! All right, there was about twenty thousand dollars in lumber cost, which would you could fill a small uh, lumber shop with that. Yeah. And then there were uh, about twenty five hundred dollars in grease to grease the the wooden rails that to, to, sure, to waves, sure. and that's about fifty barrels of grease wow. for this. And it took four hundred men to, to hammer the the wedges to bring it up. Wow. So the cost was considerably, when you, when you speak $50,000, yeah. uh, that's about $1.4 million in today's figures. Wow, mm -hmm. wow, unreal, mm -hmm. wow. So give me an idea of some of the interesting features on these boats. Now, when the, they, you said they were sister ships, so were they identical or? Pretty much identical. They, they tweaked the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the Dakota, uh, finding out you know, certain things, uh, how to make it better. Uh, but uh, these were Marden ships back then. Uh, they had Marden uh, facilities. Uh, they were heated. Uh, they were lighted. In fact, there were about 1,300 light bulbs really? on the ship. There were 370 telephones on the ship. Now, we're talking 1904, yes, 1905. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there was a library. Uh, there was a uh, woman's uh, dressing room. Of course, you have to have dressing rooms for women. Uh, a smoking room, because smoking was prevalent back then. Uh, there was a children's nursery, so that if you had children there, they can take care of the nursery while you enjoyed yourself on the, on the trip. There were two small hospitals on there. There were two large dining rooms on there. Uh, they held about 200 people each oh. uh, for the dining rooms. Uh, there was a, about 300 first class state rooms. Everyone had a porthole, a window, so you could uh -huh. look out. Uh -huh. uh, they had a library and a ladies' uh, uh, boutique. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, then they had a large lounge for cocktails, oh. naturally. Uh -huh. And uh, for, the, for the first class and second class passengers, they had private baths. But for the general shipyard, they had a, a, shared, a, a like shared, shared facility. Balance, yeah. But the most interesting thing that I found in the research, they had opium dens on them. Opium dens? Opium. Really? And the reason for that is uh, that most of the most of the crew were Oriental. 
and that was an accepted practice back Is then. Is that right? Uh, so they had those for, uh, for their crew. Wow. Yeah. I'm just I'm just amazed that a cargo ship people. I wonder if the if the the rate to go on one of these ships because it was cargo and passenger, you know, whether it was less, you know, money or whatever. I don't know. So um, off went the Minnesota on her. Let's go back to her uh, maiden voyage. Where did she, and you said she went to Seattle. She went to Seattle. How That's, long did that take? Uh, in, in fact, she did it in record time. Uh, she went to Seattle. There were a few stops on the way. Uh, but when she left Seattle on her maiden voyage uh -huh. to the Orient, okay. all right, uh, she made it to Yokohama, Japan in 13 days. That's a record time back then. Wow. Right? A very powerful boat. Uh, the, the, the engines on there were just, well, each one was uh, 10,000 horsepower. Yeah. Now, right? some of the people stayed in Seattle, but some were actually going, these passengers were going to the Orient? Oh, yeah. Various yeah. places Isn't in the Orient. Something? Sure. Yeah. Wow. And what about the uh, Dakota, her maiden voyage? Where did she head off? Uh, she uh, did the same, same thing. thing. They, they okay. traveled the same way. Right. Uh, her maiden voyage was, I believe, in uh, 1905, in September of 1905, is okay. when she made her maiden voyage. All right. All right. So maybe this is a good time to tell me what happened to them. Okay. <laughs> now, the Minnesota actually... I, I feel ashamed that I didn't know this happened in our town. <laughs> I've lived here all my life, and... So can I still go see them? You, you cannot go see them any longer, no. Uh, the Minnesota actually made 40 voyages, a total of 40 uh, voyages. Uh, and then in 1916, uh, she developed uh, engine problems, and she was laid up pretty much the whole year of 1916. Well, about that time is when World War I was, was ranking up and getting mm -hmm. up. Uh, so the British actually purchased the Minnesota to use at wartime, oh. all right? And uh, her name was changed to Troy, T-R-O-Y. Oh. Uh, and actually after the British bought it, the United States actually leased it because the war was winding down then. Oh. And the United States used her as a, uh, a, a ship to transport the veterans back from France. Oh. And she actually brought back about 40,000 troops wow. from France. And after the war, uh, it reverted back uh, to private hands. I don't know who. And it was renamed the Minnesota. But it was never used again as a cargo ship. Never used at all. Because in 1923, she was scrapped. Wow. Yeah. I can't imagine a citizen buying it. I mean, it must have been a corporation that thought they were going to use it. I don't know. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. What about the Dakota? Well, the Dakota's a different story. She, uh -oh. she made uh, seven voyages over to the Orient, or trips, as they call them. And uh, on one of the trips, uh, just off of Yokohama, Japan, uh, she went astray and uh, hit uh, some ledge rocks underground, and uh, she sunk. Oh, dear. Okay. Were any, uh, were any uh, No, the, the crew, everything was, was salvaged, or, oh, you know, good. saved. And... Uh, uh, so, remember I mentioned about the girl striking the number 13 on the bow? Yes! Maybe it had something oh to do with it. I don't God. know. That's oh, always I hate to, to say. think of that. But, uh, oh. but neither of these ships were profitable. Neither of them uh, made any money. Uh, so Mr. Hill, again, they were supposed to build four of them. He didn't build the other two. As far as the shipyard was concerned, uh, they wanted to revamp the shipyard and and uh, in fact, Mr. Hill, because he wasn't making money on these ships, said, well, maybe we can build other ships. So they put in bids for, uh, to build big, large ferry boats for down in New York. Uh, but his bids just didn't, uh, didn't make it. So the ship, shipyard was closed in 1909. Wow. Yeah. But I wonder if uh, whoever was starting up electric boats said, hey, maybe this is a good place. Well, ultimately, that's pretty much what yeah. happened. Yeah. Uh, they came in. Uh, uh, New, uh, New London Ship and Engine yeah. came in and uh, wow. decided. Wow. Are there any um, artifacts of either boat? I mean, anything that someone saved and put in a museum or something? Well, there's, there's a few. Uh, I, I know I have a, an original invitation uh, oh. for the launching of the Minnesota. You do? And then I oh. have, the, it's, a, it's a card of sorts, and it has silk uh, frail around it. Uh, but those are the only two things I don't, I, I'm sure, maybe there are people out there that have some artifacts. Yeah. I mean, the, my artifacts will go to the Groton Public Library yes. because they're yeah. part of the collection. So if anybody did know anything 
about this or have something. They always wondered what the Minnesota and Dakota were. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was amazed myself uh, when you research things and, and you discover uh, exactly what was, was here in Groton. Yeah. It's, it's hard to fathom that, that here in downtown Groton, yeah. we built the largest ships in the world. I mean, they're over two, two football field lengths long, right? And like I said, they're, they're nine decks high. Yeah. Oh, that's, it's incredible. Now, is there going to be a book published about this by any chance? I, I don't believe so. No? Uh, I don't have intents yeah. of, of okay. writing one. Yeah. Uh, but if anyone has questions, they could always call you or They can call or me and I'll you try or... my best to answer them. <laughs> uh, the research uh, on this ship uh, took about two years. Oh, wow. Uh, it's, it's spread out all over and yeah. you kind of have to put your arms around it and, yeah. and bring it in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I thought it was important that we do that. And, and, uh, I'm so glad you did because, like I said, I'm ashamed to say that I didn't even know what happened. A lot of people didn't. I, yeah. I wasn't aware of it either until I started. Uh, Jim, listening. thank you so much. You're always such a wealth of knowledge. Well, thanks for having me. Appreciate all you do for our town. Okay. Thanks for watching. I hope you'll join us for the next edition of Welcome to Groton.